I'm Dr. Rahi Victory. I'm a Canadian trained OBGYN with a subspecialty board in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. I'm licensed in Canada and the United States to practice obstetrics, gynecology, and infertility. Welcome to our show. We're going to have a great program for you now talking about male infertility, specifically what is male infertility, what are the causes, and how do we fix it. So male infertility is when the infertility a couple is suffering from occurs as a result of some element of the male side of things, either a sperm problem or a delivery of the sperm problem, such as an erectile dysfunction problem. So in regards to the sperm itself, there are five things that we look for traditionally. We need to know how many sperm there are. We need to know how many of them are moving, that's the motility. We need to know how fast they are moving, we refer to that as progression. And we need to know how many of them have normal or abnormal morphology, which is the shape of the sperm. Does it have a normal head, a normal neck, and a normal tailpiece? In regards to the fifth element, we sometimes look now to see if the DNA of the sperm is fragmented or not. The higher the DNA fragmentation, likely the worse the outcomes, and we certainly know that it's associated with a higher risk of miscarriage in a woman who is carrying a pregnancy from a male who has high sperm DNA fragmentation. So those are the five things that we look for. The count, the motility, the progression, the normal forms or morphology, and how high the sperm DNA fragmentation is. From an erectile dysfunction standpoint, obviously that's something we need to discuss with the clients and see what is going on and why it is occurring and see if there are ways to help them. Frequency is also important. You need to have sex every two days to optimize the sperm concentration and around the time of ovulation every day for a few days is okay as well. We get a lot of clients who are only having sex once a week or really only around ovulation and then not at all the rest of the month and from a sperm standpoint if you're not regularly ejaculating your sperm quality will decline significantly. So what sort of things contribute to poor sperm performance? Well weight, Exposures to chemicals, and when I say weight, of course, I'm referring to high weight, a high body mass index. Exposure to chemicals, excessive heat or excessive pressure. So if you wear really tight pants, you're in a hot tub, in a sauna all the time. Truck drivers, for example, frequently have poor sperm because they're putting pressure against the testicles frequently. And then the number one cause is the bad uh, activities or the bad habits, which are smoking, drinking, and drug use. So smoking in general will drastically decrease your chances. Alcohol, if you're drinking enough, can have have an 83% increase in the number of abnormal sperm morphology and marijuana is a 250% increase in your risk of having sperm DNA fragmentation lead to a miscarriage. So all three of those you should eliminate and at the very, very most, if you are drinking, minimize the drinking, but you cannot smoke or use marijuana if you're trying to conceive because all of those have a very negative impact on the sperm quality and on your chances of success. So what kinds of things can we do to improve your success rate? Well, that's pretty simple. So number one, make sure that you are ejaculating every two days and then ideally every day for three or four days around the time of ovulation. Number two, make sure your weight is reasonable and that you are exercising regularly. Regular exercise can help improve your cholesterol profile, which can have an impact on the sperm, your sugar, which can have an impact on the sperm as well. Number three, take loads of vitamins. There are various brands of fertility specific vitamins which are very useful and some even have been tested in trials to verify that they have evidence to support an improvement in sperm quality and they verified that they do. Health Canada in fact approved some of these for that purpose. Next, make sure that you are avoiding extremes of heat. So don't put your laptop on your lap. Stay out of the hot tub and the sauna. Don't wear anything too tight, wear loose clothing, and in some cases we actually tell guys to sit on frozen peas because cooler testicles will work better than hot testicles will. For God's sakes, don't feed the peas to anybody, please. Lastly, you want to avoid the bad habits. So no smoking, no drinking, no drug use. Those are imperative for your success and to improve your sperm. If you need investigations, you can always show up to your doctor. We do a whole gamut of tests. We will check 
check your sperm. If we need to, we will check your hormones. We frequently will check your cholesterol, your insulin, your sugar levels to make sure your overall metabolic health is good as well. And then we do the sperm DNA fragmentation test for clients that need it. There are various therapies then that will come out of whatever your sperm is demonstrating. So if using the natural techniques, we cannot improve your sperm, the next step is to consider doing insemination. With insemination, we can get rid of a lot of the dead or abnormal sperm. We can make the sperm much more energetic. They're basically going in the sperm equivalent of Red Bull. And then you can take those sperm and very gently inject them right into the uterus where they have a much better chance of getting to the egg and fertilizing the egg because now they're supercharged and you've bypassed the cervix and some of the body's natural mechanisms to prevent weak sperm from getting to an egg. If you still need further assistance for whatever reason your sperm is particularly weak or it's very low in count <clears throat> or you don't have a lot of motility in the sperm, the next step beyond that is to consider doing IVF. And then within the realm of IVF, you can also do ICSI where we actually take each individual sperm, pick the best one and inject it into each individual egg to maximize your chances of success. When doing IUI, you can expect anywhere from a low of about 8% all the way to a high of about 25% chance on average. When doing IVF, it very much depends on the egg quality. At the lowest range, you can still get low percentages with, for example, someone that's 44, 45, you may only get a 10% chance. Whereas someone that's 30, it can be as high as 80% chance. In terms of the actual fertilization level, with someone that knows ICSI very well, our own beloved Dr. Khosravi, our lab director, she can get almost 100% success every single time, even with a very high number of eggs. Whereas in other centers, you may get somewhere more like 50% or 70%, which is fairly common for six success rates with ICSI. So in sum, male factor infertility accounts for about 40% of our infertile patients and about 50% overall because some of the patients have both male and female factors. In terms of what it represents, we're looking at the erectile function, the frequency of intercourse, and we're looking at the sperm quality. And sperm quality breaks down into your count, the number that are moving, the motility. We look at the progression, which is how fast they're going, and the number of normal or abnormal sperm. And then we also look at your sperm DNA fragmentation. What kind of treatments are available? There's all sorts of natural things you can do to improve your sperm quality, and we always start with those to maximize your natural chances of success. If those aren't working, you can move on to insemination. And for some couples, they will need in vitro fertilization with or without ICSI to try and maximize the chances of success and bypass the guys who have very, very weak sperm where motility is a serious issue or the low count is a very serious issue. Hope you've enjoyed our video. We're always here to answer your questions. If you have any, reach out. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video with others so they can gain benefit from it too. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Yeah.